Well, here we are again. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about pot still versus a reflux still. Now, I know in the last one that we did, we, we, we focused primarily on the pot still itself, how to put it together, how to operate it, what the temperatures are to look for. Every bit of that is the same with a reflux still, but there are some differences that you need to understand. Um, and with a pot still, your output is, in, well, the proof of your, of your distillate is going to be about 130 to 150, somewhere around that range. But whatever you use inside your mash in order to produce your, the, the mash itself, that flavor is going to be carried through your condenser and into your jar. Um, so that's primarily why a pot still is still uh, a little bit more, for some people, uh, it's a little bit more appealing than the reflux still. Uh, because the difference would be that in a reflux still, your output, the proof of your output is much, much higher because of the reflux action that's going to be taking place. And we're going to describe that. But it'll come out at about 175 to 185. Uh, but the challenge is, is that it strips most of the flavor. There, are, there, there will be some flavor left, but it'll strip most of the flavor because of the reflux. Whereas in a pot still, um, what you're going to have is you're going to have the flavor of whatever the mash is that's inside your unit. Um, now, while we're here, uh, if someone's running a pot still, you may hear them use the term stripping run. Uh, and I've, I always recommend that you run it as slow as you can because it'll become out clearer and cleaner. Of course, the cleaner it goes in, the cleaner it comes out. So allow your mash to settle for a day or two before you put it into your pot. Uh, but when someone runs a stripping run, what their intent is, is to run it as hot and as high and as fast as they possibly can. And that is to strip as much alcohol out of their mash as possible. And at the quickest amount of time as possible. They call it a stripping run because that's not what they plan on drinking. They'll strip everything out of the pot as fast as they possibly can, which really reduces the amount of time it takes to do that. The purpose of that is to save it, and they'll do a couple of stripping runs, and then they'll reintroduce all of that back into the still. Then they'll run it very slow, which will give you a much, much higher proof, but it will also retain all the flavor. So that's just another technique. Uh, there are many techniques, just as there are many, many stills, but there are many, many techniques that do work. So you can run the first run, just run it nice and slow, take your time, and you'll have a wonderful product. Or you can run a stripping run and then reintroduce that and run it again. One other video that we're going to do eventually, we'll talk about thumpers or doublers. Uh, but that's just another topic for another day. We're going to set this one aside because we're going to focus now on what we call the reflux still. In a reflux still, the same action takes place inside your pot. This is a three gallon model made by Mile High. Uh, the same action takes place in the pot and in the column as does the pot still. But the primary difference is, is that you're going to pack your column. We'll pack the column with some uh, copper scrubbers or marbles or rashing rings. And I'll, exp I'll explain why in a moment. We're going to pack the column, and we're also going to pre-condense the vapors as they come up the column before they hit our condenser, our main condenser, to go out. First, let me show you how this is set up. The same, it's the same lid, the same connection as a pot still, the same connection as a pot still for your column, and the same in on the bottom for uh, water. And you can run this from a pump, you can run it from a hose, you can run it from the sink. Um, and then when you go from the out, when the water goes in here, it runs up and it comes out, it goes inside this tube on this side because this is a jacket that's wrapped around this column. It wraps around the, the column, this jacket, and the water runs around and it comes out this side. This is your exit. This can go back into the bucket, into the sink, out in the backyard, wherever you want it to go. But the purpose of this is, is for the vapors to rise it is a rise through the medium that you put in the column uh, that gets up to this jacketed portion where it starts to cool. As it starts to cool, it starts to condense and starts to drop. As it drops, the vapor rising revaporizes those droplets and the most volatile substances continue to rise and the other ones fall. Ergo, reflux. So you'll have this action that takes place and it's going to be an up and down motion in your column 
It'll, it'll run constantly throughout the whole operation of your still. It'll run up and down, up and down, up and down. But the most volatile substances are what rises to the top. And that's what gives you the higher alcohol content and the higher proof that comes out the end of your condenser. So it's that simple. And the reason that we use uh, copper scrubbers uh, is because there is, a, there is a, 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 a thought, a theory behind and some people ascribe to it that copper is better than stainless steel. Well, I would offer that traditional stills were made out of copper because copper was readily available back in the 20s and 30s. Copper is not that readily available now. Plus, it's very, very expensive. Uh, a stainless steel still is much more economical, much easier to clean. But if you ascribe to the idea that copper, you have this chemical reaction between the copper itself and your distillate, if you add the copper into the column, you get the best of both worlds. You get the ease in cleanliness, ease in maintenance, plus you get the, the benefit of the copper in your column as opposed to trying to have a copper still because they're, they're very difficult to maintain, and not difficult, but at least a little bit more laborious to clean and maintain. Uh, but that's it for a reflux still. The same, you're, you're looking for the same temperatures. Your thermometer goes in the top of the head. You're looking for 145 for your methanol. 179 for ethanol and about 204s. A reflux still is going to balance out when it gets to about 179. You can run them a little slower because this is going to cool, but they'll balance out and they'll run. They run a little bit faster, they run a whole lot cleaner, uh, and they will produce a very much a, a, a higher proof of alcohol as opposed to a copper uh, a pot still. But that's it as far as a pot still versus a reflux still. Not that much different. Thank you.